So coach, as mentioned, you have a lot of experience and a lot of unique markets in overseas basketball, but specifically in the Middle East. So I want to start it off by asking you, what is professional basketball like out there in the Middle East? Uh, <laughs> that's a very good question. Uh, professional basketball in the Middle East, you have to be prepared for the unknown. Um, you never know what's going to happen. Uh, very good market here in the, in the GCC. When I, when I say GCC, Kuwait, Oman, UAE, Saudi Arabia, Bahrain. Uh, so very good market. Uh, oh, Qatar. I forgot about Qatar. Um, imports are, uh, I would say, in, in, and you're probably familiar with this, the, the demands on the import is a little different than other markets. Uh, you're here to score. You're here to score. Uh, a lot of the, a lot of, uh, a lot of the teams, uh, leagues, usually a one, two import league, so they're looking for you to score, um, and and also being able to uh, integrate the, the locals in the game. But you got to get, as we say, you got to get buckets in the Middle East. <laughs> so that's how Middle East basketball is. It changes a lot. Scheduling might be changed, uh, so it's up and down. So you have to be prepared for the unknown. And when it, when it comes to imports, have you noticed, do they put any different expectation versus it's a guard versus it's a big guy? Or is it basically, regardless, as an import, you got to go get buckets? Uh, regardless, regardless. As an import, you got to get buckets. Uh, and everything is on you um, as an import. It's all on you. Uh, when I first I went to the UAE in 2010, uh, it was a one import league, all bigs, and you had to score. I think now UAE is going to two imports. Uh, when I was in Saudi, it was two imports. It was usually a guard and a big. Those guard and bigs, as we would say, as coaches, I mean, you would expect at least 25 a game from your imports. And then uh, from there, you know, you, you get your, you get some points from a couple of locals and you, you, you have a chance to win. So you expect it 25. Game, you you have to do that, and uh, and there's a lot of pressure on those airports. And so, when you're recruiting as a coach, uh, what do you look for? Do you just look for guys who are straight buckets, or does it matter if they're a winner or not? If they come from a winning program, uh, for me, you know, I always tell guys that, uh, especially because a lot of you know, you, as an American coach, I'm also the spotlight is a little different on me, uh, and I always mm -hmm. tell guys that play for me. That you know, our relationship as far as as a coach and a player, we have to work together. And uh, I, you know, I, I look for guys that can score, but also good character. Like you said, I look for winners, for good character, guys that can integrate integrate into the to the culture, uh, who can who can fit in well with with the local players. Because uh, if you bring in guys that are just bucket getters and, and they're not good people. You're not going to win, and it affects my job also. So I like to work with guys that are that I know. I, I've always, I've got, I, I have a college background. I was a college coach before I coached overseas. So I kind of use my my recruiting as a college coach to you know, how I used to recruit guys to, for college. I use similar similar uh, processes to to uh, to interview guys that I want to bring in to to uh, to coach. In my teams, so I, I look for character. I look for winners, and also you gotta get buckets. But as an American coach and American player, we gotta work together because the spotlight is on us every day. Every day the spotlight is on you, and you're gonna take the blame. I'm gonna take the blame. That player's gonna take the blame. So it's it's good to have a a great working relationship with a guy with good character that's a winner and can also play. <laughs> 